My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I am Arakea Gala Jerathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. Welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as the Ar Ardenaim. Uh, for. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking things over in my head. Uh, we're playing on as the Arden Nyam. We are doing the following. This army here, led by Captain Minluzir, they are moving round to support the Harland. I feel like Harland will hold out against the armies of Captain Talatharden and Captain Narasian. Uh, Narakian, sorry. Never the soft seas. Um, Narakian. I think they'll win that, and that'll hold for six turns, which incidentally is one turn more than it'll take them to arrive there, so we should hold on to the Harland. Over here, of course, this is where we are about to decide the fate, really, of our initial war with Erud Lewin in this large battle against Captain Kuri. Sakalur the Wrathful, but more importantly, our Gimels or the Scarred with his fine army are going to take on Kuri. From there, we hope to push north and take Karas Kalayanen, where we then hope to hold the dwarves. If we can hold Kalayanen with a reasonable army, then a secondary army We'll try and punch in for Thorin's Halls so that we can take a big moneymaker from the Dwarves. That is our aim, but it may not come to fruition. We shall see. In the rest of the world, of course, do remember that the Misty Mountains and Dol Guldur are at war and Isengard and Mordor are at war. Some people have gone as far to say that the Misty Mountains going to war with Dol Guldur is now um, the reason I'm going to lose this campaign because they will no longer be focusing on Ered Lewin, who have all of that northern border. But we will see. We have a reasonable nation behind us at the moment. We have varying degrees of training capabilities and we've got an okay amount of money. I mean, you just saw there that Dol Vorm can train a solid amount of troops. Uh, and if we can get that barracks up, it can train even more. So that's nice. But Cor Willishar as well is a, is a hub of training at the moment. But unfortunately, because it isn't on the coast, it doesn't get the very... It doesn't get the full roster. And obviously from the army barracks there, we could get our Farazons faithful... And once those pike units are out, we really will start to decimate all of these fools. Some people have also said that against the dwarves, I really should turn to, to the Tarukratan. Uh, for the Ballister will take out many dwarves in one go, but yes, I'm loath to do that at the moment. Lord. Now, do we attack Kuri, or do we oh, hope he attacks us? It's not actually that good. It's an awful lot of just warriors, some shield bearers, similar sort of stats. Bronze Guard obviously are quite good, but they seem to struggle sometimes. Guardians of Belagos are pretty aggressive, but they would fall, I suppose, to arrow fire if you can get it involved. They've got two Ballastai, though. Um, some people have told me I should build more um, conscription camps, but to those who keep telling me that, I mean, do you even know where I can build them? You're thinking of the Ardenheim's one gameplay feature and not thinking of the fact that I can only build it currently in two places. Mitchell Delving, which granted would give me a load of Breland units, and I would like that very much. But other than that, I'm fairly certain the only other place is Dol Vaughan that doesn't actually give a reward. Yes. So, um, I'm curious as to yes. hearing where you think I should be building these conscription camps. Because I can't be building them anywhere at the moment, so... But, having said that, I will go for one in Mitchell Delving. Um... Because if we can get a conscription camp out, we've got enough Kingsmen, I believe. No, we're 5%. Um, but if we can get the building ready, then our recruitment options... Certainly, I'm interested in the Merchant Cavalry because we don't get any. But also just having fodder to die for the Dwarves would be very nice. <laughs> now, Kuri, what are you going to do, friend? I'm going to end the turn. I'm going to press the space bar, and then I shall end the turn. When did I start recording this? Three minutes or so ago. Oh, Ered Lewin, yeah, come on, for God's sake. Our army is right there, you moron. Why are you trying to take the town from us? That would actually work in our favour if you do take that yeah, town, because then I can seed you out and you have to attack me. And I can kill you through um, trickery and, and tomfoolery. Yes, 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 yes. Well done. Many congratulations on your victory. Now, is his army going to stay there? That's the question. Yes, it is. They haven't been able to get reinforcements to it in time. He's just isolated and murdered himself. We will have to attack straight off the bat, but with all of the dwarves standing in the middle of the village, we'll be able to just rain all of our crossbows down on in them. Although dwarves do very well in last stand style situations. 
I suppose we could mop up the reinforcements who have just moved south to assist. We could try to. Sakala might have to move over just to I'm kill Philly. To have we got a second a general? Yes, Lord, we have. My lord, my lord. Arnakor the kind. Yes, my lord. Your All right, let's get you guys around. We've got troops moving up, as you saw. If you're wondering why these people are just swanning Lord, around here, Lord. it is, of course, because my Let's ship right. under Admiral Sacklethor. Sacklethor? Yes. They, um, unfortunately, <laughs> he gets a huge movement increase. Um, and so I don't want him to die, but he won't win anything because I haven't increased his, uh, his navy anytime soon, so... Right, what I'm thinking is, Arnakor the yes, kind, no. you're going to go over there. Splitting our forces, we Gabil Gathol, Hammer Guard. Christ. Captain Avradizimir, what have you got? You've got some troops. Right, we're going to have to fight this one, because otherwise we're going to lose it really badly. To war, my brothers. Attack! I am now starting to think that actually we might not win against the 87 Gabil Gathol, Hammer Guard. But we must think positively. Victory will come. If one believes. I believe. For every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. Right, well, there's no point doing anything other than starting, I suppose, because they're going to be there, and we're going to be here. And what have we got? Ah, oh, warriors. That's not bad. 82 of them. I imagine they will... Yeah. Right, we want to be fighting downhill, really. So if we just move over there. See what they do. Now they attacked us. No, 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 no. We attacked them. We attacked them. And they seem to be relishing in that fact. Let's start walking into positions now. They're not moving. Let's just double check what they do do. Effective against armor with a 9 attack and a 31 defense. Our generals have a 30 defense, a 13 attack, but not effective against armor. Gepilgothal Hammergaard have a 16 armor and a 10 defense. We have 16 armor, 8 defense, and a 6 on our shields. That's pretty good. So we have a better shield stat, which is good because the armor piercing doesn't actually negate the shield stat. All right, warriors. Ah, oh, perfect. Look, they're going to flank right around them. He says perfect. What he, of course, means is that went really badly. Of battle, for defeat seems almost certain. The warriors basically... Well, the warriors were never going to do that well, but they've tied them up. Our force remains. I don't think I don't think we are going to win. They're massacring the warriors. They've swung it around so that they're almost fighting on a level footing and there's no hill involved anymore. Our ally lies dead, slain by the enemy. We must help his men avenge him. Mm. I don't think we're going to win. There's more than double them. No, pull out, pull out. You're faster than they are, so you should be able to run away. Our army is tiring. We are, they've run away as well. I don't know if that's going to mean that we lose the town, actually. Oh, unfortunately, we've got to wait for our general to make it all the way out now. I mean, we've got enough troops to kill these Gabil Gothel Hammer Guard. It just means that we're going to have to send in more forces. But as soon as our general crosses the line, it'll, it'll be over. We can send real Our troops over here. There we are. From us like thieves in the night. Now, I think that might actually mean that we lose Mitchell Delving. As the garrison has died out on the field. And our reinforcing general has done sod all. But we'll just send a few more troops over. We're not going to really lose it. We might lose it for a turn or so. But I don't particularly need Sackler's army. Well... I need all the troops I can get granted, but I can't control them directly. Now, I saw a comment that did suggest that you can direct the AI if you put them on defensive mode and then you tell them where to walk. 
And whilst, yes, in theory, on defensive mode, they won't rush the enemy and they might go where you tell them, it's really not an exact science and you cannot rely on it. Um, Rally to me, men. We must regroup. We can go no further, my lord. Ah, brilliant. They didn't or win. Rip off your head and spit down your neck, my lord. All right, Orders. new plan. Crossbows. Your will, my lord. Bring the warriors. Marching to war. Oh, Captain Philly. Now it feels a little bit like maybe the odds are in my favour. So, what are you going to do? We're going to fight it again. And of course, this time we're just going to line up our crossbows and we're just going to shoot them. You know what I really would love if this game allowed you to kind of reload For the moment, the missile forces on the move. Let's pray it remains as such. Right, the plan and the hope is that we don't really have to use you. So let's actually put you right back here and we'll just keep running the crossbows backwards. No, don't put them on fire at will. Tell them what you want them to shoot them at. What you want them to shoot at. Stand as far forward as you can. They're not going to move forward. Excellent. We'll happily oblige. Ah, the... Oh, hold on, is it because it's on times six? Yeah, it is. If you put it on times one, you actually follow the bolt. <laughs> that was awful, mate. You missed the... You missed everything. <laughs> All right. We've got a few of them already. 25% in fact, apparently. The dwarves' worst nightmare. An anti-armor ranged unit. They just have no real answer to it, do they? No, 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 no. Even if the dwarves run, they still are slower than us. Oh, that was brilliant. Give me another volley. Give me another volley. Keep running, keep running, keep running. I mean, if they do really want to genuinely just run around me, <laughs> I will happily oblige. I mean, I did. A, I lashed out. At, um, I didn't necessarily lash out, but I was talking about the merits of, or the demerits of cheesing the AI and then here I am cheesing them to the Our absolute maximum. <laughs> yes! We have won here today. They deserve that utter destruction. I commented on um, someone called the Lich King who's one of those people who you never really know whether you're pleased or, or not pleased that they're commenting on your videos because he's commented on almost every video I've released in the past like two weeks with a lengthy comment sometimes in full praise and other times just calling me out for everything I'm doing and it's just like oh mate I just can't be bothered sorry um, and he takes great he's taken absolute delight in highlighting that I'm utter garbage at the Lothlorien campaign and I've basically already lost it um, and uh, I'm not his biggest fan I don't know if that's coming across here the day is ours. but um, <laughs> Why am I talking about him? Because I said about how you shouldn't really cheese the AI unless you know that you are right up against it. And unless you cheese the AI, you might, for example, lose the campaign. Yes, my lord. That was my argument. Captain Narfi is coming in. Oh, they've got so many good units. Where are they getting them from? I don't know if we should go for Under Towers or we should go for Narfi. Because these are the only reinforcements that are going to get here. Oh no, Kalinan's got roads. Bugger. Kalinan's got roads. They'll be catching up in no time. Yes, my lord. Yes. 
He's Making coming through though. Here. I'm not making any money now. Well, they've kept the toll of Mitchell Delving. Oh, of course, it doesn't have a garrison now, does it? Your will, my lord. My lord. Yes. We have to put 160 of you over there, I'm afraid. Yes. We have to go there next turn. By your command. Don't know how long that will hold out for, but we definitely don't want to besiege it because then lord, they'll arrive. I just don't know if we want to attack them or we want to attack them. I think we go for Narfi. To battle. We attack. Because if we can kill off Narfi, then we can besiege it. But we've got to try and make sure we don't lose many troops. But then we can retrain troops, not too slowly. So we can replenish if our front lines fall, but um, not very quickly. Oh, I should have waited. Why was I not paying attention? I need to pay attention. The dwarves going to be an actual problem. This hill here is looking the, the nicest bet, really. I mean, it does mean we'll be using in the we'll be in the trees with our arrows, though. Arrows and bolts whisper and whistle as they fly, but that's okay. We've got an awful lot of ranged units, actually, haven't we? Good God. Definitely want to be using that to our advantage. Don't be doing any of that, and don't be running away either. Don't shoot yet. And we really want to be using our crossbows as, as flanking, don't we? So I'm thinking just staying completely out of the trees is probably best, actually. So let's line up here. The trees on either side. Cover our flanks so that our halberdiers have a good, at least the best chance that we can give them. Give Mazur down the middle. You're going on that flank. You guys can go nice and wide, actually. Although I don't know if that will be too far wide and the AI will be hitting us there. Our archers, you can just go at the back. Not a problem with that. You hide anywhere anyway, don't you? So you're hidden until I call on you. And this is where I'm thinking the crossbows. If we hide the crossbows in the trees and then we flank round with them. Then, because um, otherwise it's so, it's just so tricky to use crossbows in a normal battle. Because they take so long to fire all of their bolts. They're often just totally useless. Right, I think that'll work. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, they're all coming down the middle. Lovely. Lovely. What have we got at the back here? Axe throwers. By the looks of it, upgraded axe throwers. More upgraded axe throwers. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We attacked them, didn't we? Idiot. We attacked them. Right, everyone group up. Move over there. Let's go. Everyone just run into a line for now. We're going to come round and hit them from this side. There's a lovely hill here, which we shall use to our advantage. What have they got at the front there? They've got some pike units. More bronze guard. Apparently the most common unit in Ered Lewin. Oh, there's some people hiding in trees. Didn't think the any dwarves could do that. Let's switch over up. Let's move further over. The Narduzagar are going to be getting pretty close to the enemy before they reach where we're telling them to go. I oh, know, they should be alright, they should be alright. As soon as we start shooting them, they will charge us. They will come and get involved. Um, they won't have any of it, so... Let's come out of time six and let's form our line then. You might get axes thrown at you, but don't worry, we'll start shooting them as soon as we can. Of course their archers go nice and wide. You can fire at will. Elite units come at the back there. You don't fire at will just yet. All of our crossbow units run over there. General run there. Um, 
they still haven't moved yet. Brilliant. Gimmels will come on that flank. Take those two with you. And the Narduzagar. Let's get you over there as well. I think that's everyone. Yeah. And our archers are firing. Fire at will, fire at will, fire at will. Excellent. Nogrod Pikes just standing there and taking it like the idiots that they are. Flank you guys further round. Similarly, you guys move round. They're in positions, they're in positions. Everyone's in positions and the dwarves are just going to stand and take our fire, apparently. But then these archers aren't going to get many kills. The crossbows are where it's at. All hunters are moving in. Crossbows! Now is your time! Standing across the field are some of Eredluin's finest. And it is on you to ensure that they fall before us. The red dawn of the Ardenaim rises above us. And with his onset of bolt fire, they charge. And it crashes! Oh, don't tell me I haven't got the bloody axe throwers fixed. Oh, bear with me. Welcome back then. So, <laughs> after that crash, I looked into the axe throwers extensively and I've come to some worrying conclusions, unfortunately. There is really no way to make axe throwers work 100% for everybody. But we've done what we can to make axe throwers work for the majority of people. Quite simply, if you have moved your Medieval 2 installation, you are going to need to edit a file in the game to make axe throwers work. I shall leave it there. Right, uh, this is actually a day later that I'm now recording this, because I recorded this last little 15 minute slot twice yesterday. And uh, I was en so enraged by the axe thrower problem and so disappointed by it, uh, that then when I came to fight this battle I didn't pay any attention and um, I got absolutely annihilated. Well we didn't lose, we lost 50% of our force. Uh, but it wasn't, I'm not replaying it just because we lost so many troops, I'm replaying it because I was really angry. <laughs> and uh, I don't think it was very entertaining at all. Um, and so I can only apologise for that. No, this, is a, this is my third attempt now at fighting this battle. But here we are, we'll give it what we can. Now you'll note, as you can see at the moment, that the AI is standing there just letting our archers fire. But you will also note that our archers do virtually no damage. However, the second that my crossbows start shooting, the enemy will charge us. And amongst their numbers somewhere... Obviously there are Nogrod Pikes, yes. But there's also some pretty horrifically pow powerful Dwarven units. Azagal's Tomb Protectors. Right, as soon as the crossbows go, the Dwarves will start charging. There we go. Alright, get as many shots off as we can. We need our bolts to do the most damage here. Gabilgothol Hammer Guard, there we are, that's the real threat. I don't even have the crossbows targeting them. Alright, charge. Stop them getting into melee. You move up. Guardians of Belagost in against Gamilzor. Gamilzor, give him what bloody for you wait. I've gone for the um, lines and lines and lines of men all standing on top of each other tactic. Who's chasing us down? Guardians of Belagost. Run! Run! You might have to sacrifice one unit of crossbowmen there. So that the others might live. I don't know where they're going, who they're running for.
Any unit that we can pick off is a unit we don't have to worry as much about. Look at those hammer guard. They're just walking through as if we don't exist. So bloody frustrating. Right, our archers have finished firing. Let's not get them killed for no reason. Run them away. The pikes have come out here to stand alone. That's excellent. We can charge them. You're for those Nogrod orc hunters. I think our line tactic might have worked a bit better. Keep shooting them. Try and pull out, get the general involved there. Gimmels, or how are you doing? Give us Serpent's Elixir. Those pikes are just going to stand there and die. They're just going to let us shoot them. Excellent. Run yourselves up there, run yourselves up there. You run down there. The pikes are still coming. Only half the enemy force remains. It's those that need to die. Yes, sheer numbers have claimed the Gabilgathol. Oh, and you are nine, you love beautiful. 18 plays 66% this time. Um, I've had quite a few comments on um, oh, videos throughout the time that I've done YouTube, obviously, with people telling me how awful I am at the game. And while I do certainly agree that I'm not the very best at the game, but I would challenge any of you who think you're absolute demons at this game and that you can school the rest of us, try and talk non-stop throughout a battle. I mean, actually talk on a subject, on a topic, any topic that you want. You're talking to yourself, granted, but just do a little test for me. Play a battle that actually matters and just try and come up with engaging um, topics to discuss while you're playing that battle and then see how you do at the end. And then replay that battle and focus 100% without saying any words, trying your absolute best, focusing 100% on the battle. Show me the difference. I am only pointing this out and it sounds obviously very childish and I'm, I'm moaning essentially, but it just does my nut in the number of people who don't just stop to think. Oh, hang on a minute. Actually, you might be a little distracted. I've watched people like, for example, some of the very best people that play Age of Empires. I, I can't remember his name, I want to say Viper. Um, and he's supposed to be one of the very best, I say supposed to be not because I challenge his integrity, but because I just don't know if he's the best Age of Empires player. But um, I believe he's meant to be the world's best Age of Empires player, or certainly up there. And I've watched many of um, his videos of doing playing Age of Empires, and he barely speaks. Because he's paying so much attention to the game. And so it's like, what do you want from me? Do you want me to just sit in silence and win these battles showing you how you can cheese the AI? Would you rather I actually used my words? Um, so there we are. It was just, uh, the only reason I bring that up is because um, this morning, it's Saturday at the moment, the 28th. Um, I was reading a couple of comments of people telling me just how outright god-awful I am on the Lothlorien episode. <laughs> but then I suppose the Lothlorien one is a... Is a is a special case because I I do do the quite poorly there with my um, <laughs> with my elves. Now this has gone much better. We've just managed to use our crossbows this time, I suppose. I don't know who's actually still fighting. Oh, units up there. The Gavilgathol, of course, they can't run away. They have to fight to the death. Well done, men. Well done. Behold how it's I'm over. By the yes. We have won here today. Thank you, narrator man. 139 kills for the Belagar crossbows, 208 kills for the other Belagar crossbows. The crossbows take the day. So to explain the axe thrower crash a little bit more, the axe throwers use a, sp a unique projectile created by the vanilla Third Age team. Ergo, the projectile file has to have a special line that references where the file is stored. That is then obviously referencing the mod. It has to reference Third Age 3 folder directory. 
which is absolutely fine. For 90% of people, that's where the game will be installed, in Mods Third Age 3. But for all the people that install it in either Teutonic or Americas or Crusades, or install it just because they've renamed it, although I'm not concerned for people who have rena renamed it properly, like myself, for example, where I've got five different versions of Third Age called Third Age 3 or Third Age DAC or Third Age Overview or whatever. But for those who have installed over the... Um, expansions because they think that's an easier and better way to install um, they will now have an axe thrower crash I'm afraid axe throwers are now gonna crash a game um, we can release a very simple download for those who do experience crashes with the axe throwers but it is just obviously another step you're gonna have to take um, so you wouldn't necessarily have to edit a file because we can upload the files and you just have to download it and copy and paste it into the right place. But therein lies a problem no with that. Fools. You've got to Send copy and paste it into the right me. place. And there's no guarantee you're going to be able to do that. Alright, we've got a little bit more time. We'll take Bomber down as well. That battle went well. I'm happy to override that. Muster your courage, men. We march into... We march into what? We march into what? Speak to me, Steve! I don't actually think the narrator is called Steve. It's just the name that came to mind. Right, we're going to just line up and we're going to shoot them. I'm not too concerned about our archers, as we've proved in, our, in that last episode. Uh, the archers don't actually do anything. It's all about crossbows. Once the crossbows are finished, though, um, well, there's only 16 of those survived. And we did lose quite a lot of halberdiers, but we lost nowhere near as many as last time. Might as well just line up, I suppose. Uh, don't run away. Well, we might as well use you. There's no point in not using you. Arrows are arrows at the end of the day, aren't they? What is it? Pikes, swords, and bronze guard at the back. There we are, in positions. Now start shooting stuff. That would get them to come over, I think. Are they running away, or are they just moving up to the hill? I think they might just be moving up to the hill. Um, oh, let's just curl around like that. Who's that up there? Nogrod Swords. Gimeldor and the General, get yourselves up here. Brilliant. Serpent Elixir, you keep those guys busy and the crossbows will take care of the rest. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. I hope, anyway. Come on. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, that was a blinding strike. And again, point blank, please. Oh, these ones on the sides are missing, that's why. Let's get those crossbows over there. Ready to strike. Nice little death box. We wait for battle. Brilliant. I think they are dead, and if they make Good it to times. the melee, it won't matter. The enemy general lies dead. The enemy army it's over! 42 plays 319. Yes, boys. 61. Bag our crossbowmen, no surprises there. We almost lost our general there, actually. In fact, we might have done. 
<coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> sorry, I thought I was going to be a chuckle and then uh, coughing my guts up. We might have just lost a general, but that's okay. That is okay. Um, I also am um, here to, to tell you that uh, this week you will have already seen, obviously, there wasn't a faction overview, but instead there was a developer diary and a changelog. There will, of course, be a Lothlorien episode, but the second... Our Denium episode this week will be taken up with another Soulstorm video. Because I want to do another Soulstorm video. Um, so you'll have to wait a whole week. Oh, and also, unfortunately, this coming weekend is my uh, sister's wedding. And um, the next week as well is um, the final part of my assessment to um, qualify as a solicitor. So I... Um, and unfortunately, not going to be very active next week. So there might not be very, very many, very many episodes. But then after that, I am done and dusted with all those things. And then it, but then hopefully the, the house move will kick in at some yes, point. My lord. So it's a bloody busy few weeks. We shall engage, my lord. Your uh, merge together what we can. Who can we take Orders. from you then? Probably seven. Uh, you more, you merged quite nicely. Um, there's 51 of those. Can we take any of those? Your will, my lord. Yes, my so lord. So we don't want those. We don't want those. Ah, uh, we can't move those out. Borders. Well, you guys can at least walk around here. Go and stand next to him. By your command. Can't move those out. Borders. Chump those in. When we can, we'll try and swap those two for those two. Up, my lord. My lord. See Your if, that, orders, if my we lord. can do that. Dwarves are very doing aren't happy with us, but hopefully Captain Balrim isn't going to arrive. They might head. rise up straight Rip away. Potential, I suppose. One of you is going into there, aren't you? My lord. Yes, my lord. We need to get him back. But we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Did I move this gentleman? Your orders, yes, I did. My lord. My He's lord. moved. All right, I think I can happily end it there then. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. This one has been much cheerier than the one I first recorded and was going to upload. <laughs> Until we speak again, dear friends, Navar and Aden Pedimad Melunin, and farewell. <laughs>